So to start this job, first you want to raise and support the truck safely. Then you're going to want to have to take off this hubcap slash lug nut cover and then remove the wheel. I'm using a 22 millimeter socket. So to get started on removing this brake hose and replacing it with the new one, I'm going to start by removing this ABS wire from this bracket. The new brake hose comes with this bracket. So remove this 10 millimeter bolt. This is what holds it to the control arm. And the next thing I want to do is try to break free this fitting here before I loosen it up from this bracket. This way it's sturdy and I can put some force into twisting it. But I also sprayed it down with some rust penetrant because if it is seized, I want to try and break it free before it starts bending my line and then I break a brake line and you know, gets bad from there. For this job, you're gonna want a 13 millimeter flare nut wrench. This is a wrench that is almost completely enclosed. It's made especially for uh, fittings like this, line fittings. This, if you use a regular wrench, you risk uh, stripping out the fitting. And right here, as you can see, it is twisting the whole line, which is exactly what, which is exactly what I don't wanna do. So I'm gonna have to work at this and break it free. All right, so I worked at it for a little bit. I sprayed it and I tapped it a few times with a very small hammer. That usually helps break this line free. If for some reason you cannot break it free, you can try to take off this and then untwist the hose off of the line. That usually works too. At this point, I'm just gonna work it back and forth. Spray it down a lot. The next thing I'm gonna do is pinch off this brake hose with some special pliers. They don't squeeze the hose all the way, but they do restrict the uh, flow of brake fluid. If you don't have these, you can use a pair of locking pliers. This is just gonna help you keep brake fluid inside the system while you replace the hose, but this is off. Okay, with a 10 millimeter, brake free the banjo bolt. Make sure you have a collection bucket underneath because you will lose some fluid. Not much though, that's the point of those brake hose pliers and the old washer fell out, which is good. You can temporarily put the banjo bolt back where it belongs. To remove this clip here, you can use some needle, no needle nose pliers or a screwdriver, grab onto it and give it a twist. Before you move any further, make sure that the brake hose comes free from this bracket. There we go. And now you can finish removing your brake hose by spinning it. Have your new one ready. Have your new uh, brake hose ready because fluid will come out. On the new brake hose, I'm gonna use these pliers to limit the flow of brake fluid while I install the hose. It's easier to twist the hose onto the fitting than it is to take a wrench and try and spin that rusty old fitting. It helps if you spin it the right way. There we go. All right, that's nice and snug. Once that's bottomed out, clean up your area a little bit. We'll clean it off later, but this makes it easier to grip things. On this brake hose, you have little nubs here. Those have to line up with the holes that are made in this bracket. That's the only way you're gonna get the uh, brake hose in. So once this is in and lined up, have your clip ready and slide it in. This, that's what's gonna lock in your brake hose into the bracket. And now you can use your wrench and simply snug up the fitting. Okay, that bottomed out. Give it about a quarter of a turn. After it bottoms out, make sure it's tight and make sure you have no leaks. It's important to clean up this work area because otherwise you won't know if you have any fresh leaks or if it's just remaining fluid from uh, when you installed it. Remove your banjo bolt and have your new crush washer is ready. You're gonna put one over the banjo bolt. Then you're gonna put the banjo bolt through this hose and keep in mind that the bolt will go facing the direction of this curve. If you put it the other way, your hose is not gonna sit on properly. So the hose needs to curve around, wrap around the caliper. And then once it's through the hose, put on another washer and start in your banjo bolt. Snug it up. Make sure it's nice and tight. What you wanna do 
is crush those two copper gaskets just a little bit. That way it creates a good seal. After it bottoms out, give it maybe a total of a half a turn and that should do it. Obviously we're gonna check for leaks at the end. Now you can release your pliers. That will let the brake fluid flow again. Remove this rubber cap for your bleeder screw and with a 10 millimeter, open it up. And now we're gonna perform what's called a gravity bleed. What that means is gravity is gonna pull fluid down through the hose. It'll take the air with it, put it through the caliper, and obviously air rises, so it'll come out of the bleeder screw. While the bleeder screw is open and it's bleeding, let's reattach this bracket here. And clip in your ABS wire and I can hear it dripping in my collection bucket. So let's close this up. Okay, now I'm gonna clean up my work area. And the last step that you have to do for this job is to do a full brake bleed. That way you make sure all of the air has come out of this hose and of this caliper. What that consists of is if you don't have a one person bleeder kit, which puts vacuum on this bleeder screw, you have to have someone inside the vehicle pump up the brakes. Obviously double check your master cylinder and make sure that it's full have them pump up the brakes and hold the brake pedal with pressure downward, crack open the bleeder, fluid and air will come out if you have any air, and repeat those steps until you have no more air coming out. Once that's done, double check your master cylinder and make sure that it's full, close it up and you're good. And of course at the end, put your cap back on, that'll prevent any debris from going in there. All right, last step is to put the wheel back on. Once all of your lug nuts are started, Go ahead and bottom them out and then torque them to 140 foot-pounds. Okay, tighten all the lug nuts to 140 foot-pounds. And don't forget about your hubcap slash lug nut cover. 